Hey guys, today's video, we're going to be remaking my battery cart. So if you guys saw the last video, we did an unboxing of a new inverter I bought because this is a single phase and I want split phase output and I don't have enough room to mount another server rack battery. And I don't know, I just, this is my version one cart, so I'm going to make a version two cart. So I'm going to go and take some measurements. I think my idea is to be able to put the server rack batteries next to each other. And then underneath that's going to be the cow pack. So this is just the beginning, but I wanted to show you guys kind of what my cart looks like now. This cart's going to be completely stripped. This inverter is going to be put on a hand truck and I'm going to make a more portable setup with that one. This thing's been super reliable. I really am super happy with the setup, but time to clean all this up and try something different. So I measured, so two server rack batteries next to each other is about, it's a little under 40 inches. So I'm gonna make the cart 40 inches wide and probably about 20 inches deep because I want it to be somewhat compact. Obviously this is gonna be on casters as well. That way I can move it around. I could permanently mount it on a rack like, you know, something like that, but I want this thing to be able to be rolled around and be able to use wherever I want. Let's go ahead and go to the backyard and start cutting some metal. All right, so we got the base all laid out. As you can see, got the ends cleaned up. So I have it on these bricks to keep it level. And then I'm gonna throw this magnetic angle finder in here to help line the corners up, just like that. And then I'm gonna tack it all together, measure it like this and like this to make sure it's even. If it's even, I'm gonna burn it all in. So this is gonna be the base. And then once this is all welded, then we're gonna build something coming off the back to actually hold the inverter. All right, we got our base frame done. Now I need to put two sticks going up and that's going to be the back where we're gonna mount a piece of plywood and then the inverter is gonna sit on that. And then like I said before, all the batteries are gonna sit right here. So not quite sure how tall to make it. Um, I'm just gonna kind of wing something together and I'll show y'all when I get more progress. Alrighty guys, so the entire frame is all tacked together. And as you can see, I kind of braced it up pretty good. So this thing should be pretty solid. So now I'm gonna take it to the yard and finish weld all this. I gotta get all geared up to do that. I also went and bought a big piece of plywood. So it's gonna be our backing and then also to put on the bottom to put the batteries on. We're gonna paint it. Not sure what the color is gonna be yet, but I do wanna paint it and make it look really nice. I also need to put flat bar right here. That way we can mount the caster, except it's gonna be obviously the other way around. And I think I'm gonna do them like this. And then over there is gonna be some swiveling ones. That way we can easily maneuver this thing around. So should be pretty good. Those are rated for 600 pounds. Got all the fab work done on the cart for now. Everything's solidly welded. I also started grinding all the weld smooth just to kind of make it look a little nicer. Acetone the whole thing, wiped everything down, and I'm gonna start painting it. And actually I already started painting it and I was like, oh wait, I gotta get my GoPro. So we're gonna do white. I think it'll look good. And yeah, I also have to drill the holes still for the casters. So I welded these quarter inch plates and that's where the caster is gonna sit. So far so good. It seems really strong. It's pretty light. It probably weighs about 50 pounds. And we're gonna keep it rolling. I gotta drill 16 holes. I already got four of them done. All right, I think before I finish painting the frame, I'm gonna go ahead and use this big piece of like 15, 30 seconds or some weird measurement plywood. We're gonna build the bottom and we're gonna build the back. I wanna try to do a really good job of trimming it, making it fit. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the rack on here, trace it all out, rough cut it with the jigsaw and then kind of fine tune it and get it to fit really, really good on this thing. I still have to go buy bolts in order to bolt the casters on. And then obviously this all still has to get painted. Looking pretty good. And then get the wheels put on and then we can start mounting components. Okay, I'm just gonna trace this. All right, give it a nice good trace line to be able to cut. I and mean, then right around here, I'm gonna have to notch to fit around the square too, but I want this thing to fit really good. So I'm gonna try my very best. strong that is it doesn't even flex i love it i want to sand all this smooth too i don't know if i'm going to paint it i kind of like the natural look of plywood i'm going to do a very good job sanding it cleaning all the edges up and making this thing where you burn your hand across it and it's smooth no splinters none of that all right now we're going to put the top the backboard on see if it fits oh it's just barely not gonna either not gonna fit or oh yeah it fits nice there it is that's basic outline of our cart i think now i'm going to pull the wood back off completely paint the frame get the casters mounted then we'll put the wood back on then i'm going to come from the back right here i'm going to probably trim this flush but maybe i'll leave it like this i don't know yet but anyways i'm going to drill a couple holes through these to put some bolts on all four of them probably put two bolts that'll probably be more than enough and then from here this is where the inverter is going to mount and then the batteries are going to go down here I'll be able to easily hopefully grab this thing and roll it around with me you know if i want to move it around the house to power various things all right i got the paint job pretty much done we're still in white we went with that it looks pretty good 
I have the casters right here, so I think I'm going to go ahead and try to throw those on. That way I can roll this thing around easier. I also got the wood parts sanded down smooth, so those pieces there, those pieces there. I'm not going to paint these just for now. If anything, I'm going to stain them, but just for now, I'm going to leave them as is. They're nice and smooth, and I think they look okay. Once I get the wood pieces on, I need to drill holes to put bolts to hold those on, and then the cart will pretty much be done. And then from there, we need to start mounting all of the components. All right, I got the wheels on. Check this out. Oh yeah, that rolls butter smooth. I think I'm gonna take the whole cart inside to finish it because I don't have to do any more painting. I don't have to do any more welding. The wood's all cut. So I think I'm gonna take everything inside because it's really hot out here and finish up all the mocking up work in there. Cause then once the wood's on, we're gonna start mounting the inverter, power outlet, load center, batteries, all that good stuff. The next day we got the wood mounted and done. I went ahead and put one bolt in to hold the inverter kind of where I want it and then I leveled it. So that's kind of what we're looking at so far. So I got one bolt already in and this bolt goes through the wood and through a piece of square tubing. So I'm gonna do these two as well. And then probably two down here. And I think the unit's gonna be good to go where it's at. My next is gonna be mount the load center and start wiring up our plugs. I'm really not sure where I want to put these yet as far as, you know, you know up or lower or whatever. And I'm probably gonna end up coming off the unit like that, you know, kind of somewhere in there. That way when you go to plug something in, the cord's not hanging like super high. I think that'll work out fine. But maybe build another, take some of my extra plywood, put a piece there and put all the plugs there or put one on each side. That'd be kind of cool. As far as plugs, I only have one of these so far and I'm gonna make a second one. And then I have one of these 240 plugs because we have a split face inverter, we can make use of that. This is the load setter we're gonna run. It's got a 50 amp breaker for the 240 plug and each of the 120 plugs are gonna have its own 20 amp breaker. So 120 amp breaker is going to supply one outlet. So this will have its own 20 amp, this will have its own 20 amp. So once I get the next four plex outlet thing built, two more circuits will be complete. So th these will each have their own 20 amp legs. So I have some number six wire, some wire loom or conduit stuff. And this is what's gonna be ran from the inverter to our load center. As far as batteries go, I think I'm gonna start with the cow pack. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it off of this and it's gonna go on the bottom. And then from there, I'm gonna build like a little shelf, more likely out of square tubing, put a piece of plywood on the top. And then both our server rack batteries will go up there. I think that's gonna be the cleanest and easiest way to do it. Alrighty, so I did go ahead and get the wire from the inverter ran a piece of conduit a little hole right there I do have to get the correct size thing that goes here for some reason this doesn't come with it the EX the 6500 EX actually came with these but this one did not so that's kind of disappointing I really wish they'd throw that in there because now I have to go hunt for them but not a big deal whatever so I got to add that still but neutral both lines and a ground are connected and they run through this piece of conduit in our distribution box so I already got the both hot wires the neutral and then I had to install my own ground bar because the breaker box I bought didn't have one. Honestly, if I can get the... All right, guys, so I have an empty dual gangway outlet box right here that I'm going to be using to mount the outlets. And the way I'm going to mount it to the cart itself is I took some eighth inch by one and quarter inch flat bar. And I drilled three holes. We have a big hole and two small holes. And then I drilled two small holes on here. And basically this bar gets bolted to that and then we take this whole assembly and we bring it to the cart and I basically just drill a hole and bolt it all together and that seems to work great. I didn't want to weld these on the frame in case I wanted to move these around or maybe change it up in the future. So that's the reason I did the, the bolting method. And then here's one completely done. So I do need to take this back off, you know, clean it up a little bit more and paint it. And then here's the other side of it and as you can see it's plenty solid. I also went ahead and did our 1450 plug and same idea, just cheap hardware from Harbor Freight, nothing crazy, nothing fancy. And that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and get this last one done, get it fitted to the cart. I think I'm going to do a left right configuration. So I'll have that set of outlets there and that set of outlets on the other side. All right, the box is on. And I also got some of these half inch grommet fitting things. And I have the tubing to connect the conduit. Got one there, got one there. And that box for some reason only has three quarter inch, which is fine. And then also this right here needs to be a three quarter inch. The problem is the hole right here is way too small. So my solution is I went on Amazon and bought a really cheap set of stepper bits. These are very cheap. So I would not use these on like super hard steel or anything, but just for this project. I, th I think it'll be fine. I think they're like $22 or something. They even came in a little nice case. So I'm going to go ahead and enlarge that hole. That way we can fit this three quarter inch bung thing and then be able to make this connection look super nice and professional. All right. Sorry for the poor lighting, you guys. I have the load center pretty much all ready to go as far as the wires coming in. And I have these little bungs on everything. So I have some number 12 wire here and the number 12 wire is going to be used to run from our load center to all of our outlets. Except this one, it's going to get number six or number eight whatever I have more of, but I think number eight will be enough. But if I have number six, I'll do that just to make it overkill. And the way it's gonna be wired is each of these plugs is gonna have its own 20 amp breaker. So this will be two sets of leads, two sets of leads in the other one, and then one set of lead for the big plug. All right, guys, the setup is simple. We have two hots, two neutral, one ground, and I just go ahead and pull them through. Here we are at the distribution block. Each outlet has its own hot and neutral, and then I'm gonna use the ground for both of these, which I believe should be okay. I hope it's not against code, I'm not really sure. 
that's how we're gonna do it and then i'm gonna install the outlets like this we got this side kind of tightened down and mocked up i'm gonna go ahead and do the other side get both outlets fully installed get the cover plate face plate on and this will all be complete and for anyone who's interested these are the uh outlets i went with just from home depot or lowe's except this one i accidentally bought a tamper proof one so it's got these little deals in there but that's all good and if you're unsure how to hook these up but basically the small hole right here on the side that's your hot wire this will be your neutral and the ground is right there if you're curious so that's how i'm hooking them up all right so i got all the outlets done the only problem with this one is i had the wrong little fitting that goes right there so i do need to add that but i did go ahead and get it all wired so that one is done that one is done and that one is done here's what the back of the unit looks like i'm gonna end up 3d printing some nice little clips that i can use to secure these to the back of the wood to clean that up this is what the wiring looks like in the box i think i did an okay job I did not put an input breaker because the inverter already has one right here so we're good there next i need to start putting some batteries on here and i'm probably going to start with the cow battery because that's the biggest battery so i need to pull it off the car i need to disconnect all the wires and everything and pull both of those packs out because it is two separate packs put in series and lay it on here and then once that's laid on there i need to build another platform in order to put the sub rack battery that one and that one you gotta put some bus bars a fuse a current shunt all that good stuff's gotta go on there all right i got you guys set up on the old troy pole to watch me struggle moving these batteries oh man these are so heavy what was i thinking i don't know how far i can go apart before they start to bind because i don't feel like taking the balance harness off i've already taken the series connection in the back off and i've already unbolted the ems from one side of the pack each of these probably weighs i don't know 100 and something pounds maybe 100 i don't know i used to go to the county fair and it was like guess your weight to win a prize i never forget the teeter-totter point Ooh. all right so we're on this so i guess i'm gonna slowly drag this across the floor and set up up on here hot dog style oh my god all right guys so here it is with its first set of batteries on there and i'm happy to say i think i made the dimensions just right because these things fit perfect and then now i'm going to start designing the top shelf to put the server rack batteries on and those are probably going to be stacked about here all right so i got this piece fabbed up and that's going to be the shelf to put our server rack batteries on so i'm going to go ahead and set it on the cart and show you all what that's going to look like all right there it is on the cart i'm going to put something across here lay our server rack batteries there i left plenty of room underneath this to be able to run cables and service this battery now that it kind of fits on there and it's somewhat square i'm going to go weld it all up and paint it i am going to end up putting some corner supports around the whole thing to make it really strong and that's it should be pretty good so i'll show you guys once i'm done with the fabrication of that and there my cat's going crazy this is a cat cam all right so i just got the frame done to put the piece of wood on top to put the server rack batteries I do have to finish painting it, but I'm just kind of test fitting it for now. But I need to go ahead and throw the server rack batteries up here, and then we need to start wiring up the DC side of everything. <clears throat> so we need to put some bus bars. I need to put the current shunt and make it look all pretty. So I think I'm going to do most of it over here because there's kind of a lot of space right here. Or maybe down there. I have space down there too. I do want to keep this area clear just for the fans and then in case I want to add something else right there. So I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do it yet, but so far this is what it's looking like. It'll be easy to expand this in the future as well if I want to add more batteries. Probably six and I wouldn't want to fit more than that just because that's already 600 pounds by itself. The casters are rated for 600 pounds each. So that's harbor freight pounds. So I don't really know what that equates to real world. All right, guys, check it out. Got the batteries all put on here and they fit nice. I think it actually looks very good. I wasn't sure how it was going to look. You know, I do want it to look nice and professional and clean. As far as mounting the batteries, they're actually just sitting under their own weight. And same with this little table. So I'm probably going to leave it like that just for now. I don't really intend on ever taking this out of the house. The whole point of having it on wheels is so I can move it around the house. And it's not just stationary because of how heavy this is. If I ever wanted to move it, I don't want to have to keep taking the batteries on and off because they are very heavy. These two by themselves are 200 pounds. That's probably another 150 pounds. Converter's 50 pounds. The weight of the frame's probably another 50 pounds. Let's see if it still rolls smoothly. Oh yeah, too easy. It's actually, look, look at that. It rolls really nicely. So happy about that. Now I'm gonna start wiring it all up and then I need to clear all this stuff out the way. Some solar input connections. And then once that's all done, we can put the cover on and we should be good to start using this thing. I still haven't done any of the setup. I do have to set up all the communication. All right, guys, the power cart is completely done and it is fully functional, as you can hear. So we got our watt meter mounted. I got all the parameters in the unit set. I didn't really have to do a whole lot. It did take me a second to get the battery communication working, but now it does work. This setup has been flawless. I actually did end up selling the cow pack, so I'm gonna probably end up saving up for a little bit more so we can get maybe two more of these 
or I'll save up a little bit more and get a one of those Power Pro batteries that's a way bigger battery. Not sure how we're gonna fill in the hole of that cow pack. So we only have 10 kilowatt hours right now, but I'm making that work for, for just for now and it's working great. This 6000 XP is awesome. It's definitely a lot quieter than the 6500 EX. It's less buzzy. The fans are a little bit quieter and overall it is definitely a little bit nicer product but not bashing the 6500 ex too bad it did function great never had an issue with that and i still have it but as you guys can see i've already put 691 kilowatt hours through this thing and just solar generation and that's over the last like maybe three months but yeah i use it every single day it's been really great and reliable and i'm super happy with the upgrade it's came out very well we still have plenty of room to expand and add and do all that stuff so that's going to do it. I'm going to wrap this video up. I just wanted to show you guys my new setup. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one.